Hello, my name is Melissa, and I'm the Program Director for the Education Services of United Way, Harrison and Doddridge County, and we're going to have a STEM camp this fall coming up. We'll have one lesson every month, and I'm going to introduce the lessons with these videos, kind of prepare you for the lessons and let you know what's coming up and if you want to sign up to come to STEM camp. The first lesson, this is STEM lesson one, and let's first of all define what is STEM. STEM is an acronym for science, technology, engineering, and math. Today's lesson is science, a little bit of math, but mostly science, and it's on buoyancy. And buoyancy is the tendency of an object to float in a fluid. If you've ever been taking a bath or in the pool and you have floaties that float or a rubber duck that floats, that's buoyancy, those objects that are floating. And, and water is a specific fluid here. But all liquids and gases in the presence of gravity exert an upward force known as the buoyant force on an object immersed in them. So we're going to look at how that force interacts with gravity to get the objects to float. The buoyancy is just the difference in the pressures that act on the opposite sides of the object immersed in this fluid. So as that rubber ducky is floating on top of the water, we have gravity pushing down on it and buoyancy is the force that's pushing up. If you know anything about Newton, he said, you know, he talks about forces for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, different forces. We can't, if I'm pushing down on this table or on this board, this board has to be pushing back on me with the same amount of force or it goes flying into into the wall. So we're looking at buoyancy here with a gravity and buoyancy up. So here's our formula. B is the buoyant force that we're talking about. This looks like a P and this, this represents density and that's the density of the fluid, right? Of the, of the liquid that the object is immersed within. And then V is always volume and that's the volume of displaced liquid and we're going to look at that. And then G is gravity. Every, we always put G in these equations and it's always equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. That's just the force of gravity and that's how we measure it in meters per second squared. So say we have a scale and we have a five kilogram weight. This is a bucket of water or I don't know, it could be a pail, some kind of water. And then we're going to lower that five kilogram weight down into the water and then we're going to see how much water comes out. That's the displacement, how much is displaced. And then we can kind of see what that buoyant force is. When we first um, discovered that this was happening, there was an ancient Greek mathematician and his name was Archimedes. That's why it's called the Archimedes principle. It's the physical law of buoyancy. And he was also an inventor. And um, it, he, this principle states that any um, body completely or partially submerged in a fluid, it could be a gas or a liquid, um, if it's at rest, it's acted upon by that upward buoyant force, and then the magnitude is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by that body. So the weight of how much fluid comes out when we put that in. So if we want to look at an example, we have a ship that we launched into the ocean. It could be a, a liner, it could be any kind of ship, and it sinks into the ocean until the weight of the water it displaces is equal to its own weight. So you know it goes down like this because you can see the water come up, but that's as heavy as that ship is, we need an equal amount of water to come back out to keep it floating on the top. And then if we put cargo in it, if we load a bunch of people, if we load a bunch of boxes, it will go deeper and deeper and we have to displace more water. It still has to equal the amount of the ship and the cargo, not just the ship. So see, it continuously matches the weight of the ship and its cargo. So we're continuously displacing water to equal the amount of gravity and the weight of the, of the ship. So if the weight of an object is less than that of the displaced fluid, so we have something that's lighter, like the rubber duck or the floaties in the pool, then it's going to rise to the top and, and be on top of the water. Um, that's the case of a block of wood. Sometimes we put it in the water and it will float to the surface. Or helium-filled balloons, and we're going to look at that here in a little bit, um, that is let loose in the air. If we have extremely heavy objects and they can float in water, as long as their shape <clears throat> is carefully crafted to ensure that the displaced weight of the water is greater, we have to have more water come out, than the total weight of that object, heavy, heavy objects. 
Um, fundamental to Archimedes' principle is the concept of gravity. We just talked about that. And, um, grav and, and the fluid pressure goes up with the depth because of the gravitational weight of the fluid above. So you see those deep sea divers, you can go down so far and there's not much weight on you, much pressure. The farther you go, you've got the weight of all of that water and gravity pushing down. So it's more, there's more force. The force is stronger the closer to the bottom that you go. That's what happened to that little thing that went to look at the Titanic of it imploded because there was too much pressure. It couldn't take the pressure of the water anymore. And then that's the force of that submerged object is going to increase with depth. So the farther down it goes, the more force that object experiences. So here's my little picture of an ob diagram of, of a buoyant force here pushing up and gravity pushing down. So this fluid is going to supply a force equal in magnitude and gravity is going to um, the downward force that acts on all objects. If you push it down and hold it down in the water it'll stay down. If you let it back up it's going to float because it's going to displace that water then. It's closely tied to density. We talked about density. Density is just the ratio of mass to volume. P is equal to m over v. How much mass you have to the volume we're putting there, that's density. And specific gravity is the density of an object in comparison to the density of the water. So an object that is going to float when placed in water is going to have a low specific gravity, right? Low, uh, the density of the object, the density of the water. It's going to be less dense than the water, so it floats. And then the one that has a high specific gravity is going to sink because it's, it's heavier than the water. Uh, most buoyant objects are objects that have a relatively large volume and a low density. You can think of the volume of a ship. That's a huge amount of volume compared to the ocean. Not so much, but it's huge. So um, there are other examples of buoyancy that we can think about, kind of real life examples. This is my diagram of a fish. And a fish also has the buoyant force here. This would be if you cut it in half and you're looking into it. Um, it's, um, they can achieve buoyancy through an organ called a swim bladder. So here's their kidney and their stomach. And right above, in between those two, they have a swim bladder. And bladder holds water, right? You have an air bladder, water bladder, uh, kind of like a hot water bottle. So um, it resembles an air-filled balloon and what it does is it expands with air inside the fish and it can control the fish to move higher or lower in the water compared to how much air is within the swim bladder. So when the bladder expands, right, we have more volume, it's taking up more space, and the, uh, the fish will increase and its mass remains the same. It still has the same amount of mass. Its weight won't be the same, but it has the same amount of mass. And so um, then we get a lower specific gravity and that fish is going to move up and then when it gets rid of that water, we're going to have a higher specific gravity and it can go down. So it controls where it goes in the water up or down compared to how much air is within the swim bladder of, of the fish. So that's one kind of biological example. Another one is a submarine. This is my diagram of a submarine. And they dive underwater and what they do is they allow water to fill up in ballast tanks within the submarine and that's going to increase the weight of that submarine and it makes the average density greater than that of the water so it's going to sink. It's more dense than the water, the water that it's displacing. And then um, tanks of compressed air, they're going to force those um, to force the water out of those ballast tanks. So we just put air to force it out to let it come back up to the top because now it's less dense than the water because we've gotten rid of the water that was in the tank so it comes to the surface. And like I told you we were talking we're look at the hot air balloon that's another example um, they can experience buoyancy in any fluid not just water we've been talking about water but air uh, in this hot air balloon and hot air balloons are buoyant in air and what they do this is the fire you always see the fire and it heats up that air inside the balloon and we got all this hot air that's up there and it's dense you know what molecules when you heat them up want to get away from each other so it's less dense we don't have them all packed together like you would in ice. When it's cold, they all get together. When you heat them up, they all expand. And so they're going to push that hot air balloon out and up because we're, we're creating a density difference within the air that's displacing as it goes up. And when they want to come back down, all they do is shut those heaters off and they have a little vent that they can open that is going to cool that air back down and then it compresses, becoming more dense. And so it's going to sink to the bottom. See, they have, or to the ground. Here's the ground down here and it goes down towards the ground. 
So we've looked at a lot of um, principles of buoyancy, and we look at Archimedes' principle. And our first STEM lesson is going to be on, sa on Saturdays. We're going to have them on Saturdays in the fall, on Saturday, September the 9th from noon to two, and if you call this number, 304-326-7762, you can register. And, we're, and then the first session, what we're going to do, building on these principles, we're gonna build a cardboard boat, and then we're gonna take those to compete in the Paddle for a Cause on September 17th at Maple Lake. So if you're interested, please, check on, um, let me know here, just ask for Melissa. And if you're interested in science, I have a ton of science videos that I did for literacy volunteers of Harrison County. And I'm gonna put a link below. And if you're interested in math, there's English videos, there's English as a second language videos. If you need help coming up with school projects or anything that has to do with school, click on that link and subscribe to that channel and subscribe to this one. And we will help you with those things. And we thank you so much for clicking on our videos and have a good day.